Oh, hello, come in. Oh, hi, hi, uh, nice to see you again. I missed you. Of course, I was away last week. We had a lovely time. We, <coughs> you know, we're going to retire to um, this little uh, small Norfolk market town called North Welsh, and we've got a little semi. We're somehow going to have to squeeze all these books into smaller rooms. So we were there to do a bit of maintenance on what will be the new house and paint it and and also have a bit of a break, oh, which is lovely. And uh, we discovered some wonderful woodland walks, so I was pleased. Anyway, I'm coming back and getting on with things. I thought we might just pick up the threads. Jim, do come over. Um, this is, um, you know, a, a modern reprinting of um, Gustave Doré's illustrations to Tennyson's um, The Idols of the King, I might think. So he, Dore um, was an engraver, really, and um, he was really extraordinary. The, the, this um, some classic images, the knight with his shield. Anyway, you uh, um, come out on the might of the round table. There's Arthur. There's a wonderful um, engravings. But you may remember I decided to take up the, 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 the tales myself again and to use the ballad form. Now this is an edition of Tennyson's and Tennyson used um, very grand, sort of almost Miltonic blank verse. Anyway, the part of the story that I've got interested in and I'm taking up is, is the story of the coming of the Holy Grail. Um, that's Sir Percivale, I think, setting off. Um, and uh, 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 Tennyson came late to the story. He was a bit anxious about how to handle so holy a subject. I think Tennyson does it well. I want to do it in a slightly different way. And um, uh, the real beginning of the coming of the Grail is the coming of Galahad himself, who is to be the Grail Knight. And Galahad, of course, is um, is descended through his mother, Fair Elaine, the daughter of King Peles, and King Peles right back to to Joseph of Arimathea, who brought the Grail. But he's also descended from Lancelot, who's, who, who has a similar sort of holy descent, because unbeknownst to Lancelot, when he was enchanted in Peles Castle and lay with the Fair Elaine, um, thinking she was Guinevere. Um, she, he was under an enchantment. Anyway, Elaine um, eventually bore Galahad. So um, she then had Lancelot sent for to knight him. And of course, Lancelot didn't realize, neither did Galahad realize that. Oh, of course, Galahad knew and loved Lancelot and great stories of Lancelot, but he had no idea that Lancelot was really his father. So, and in a way, the coming of Galahad is the coming of healing, including the healing of the the kind of wound in the very fellowship of um, the Round Table, which which Lancelot and Guinevere's relationship has introduced. Anyway, it's a wonderful series of woven strands, and Tennyson does it in one way, and I'm going to do it in another. So I thought you like looking at that book again, but I thought I might just read you the next part of um, my own efforts in this direction. Have a seat. You may remember what I read you last time was the, um, the childhood of Galahad, just a little bit about the idea of Galahad growing up in Pelle's castle and not knowing who his father is and um, hearing all these wonderful stories from his mother. So um, that I was thinking through for myself, but Thomas Mallory, who, Sir Thomas Mallory, who brings all these tales together, then tells the story of how when, Lon when Galahad was 15, in a sense, he gets a childhood dream and he gets to meet the great Sir Lancelot. But in fact, more than that, he, he is knighted by him. So I'm going to take up that part of the story. You remember my, my one last time ended with the two verses. And then he knew a time would come when he would leave his home, forsaking the familiar roof for heaven's starlit dome. And he would ask Elaine the Fair, when will I be a knight? And she would sigh and say, in time, and hold her young son tight. So now I take up the thread of the narrative again. It was the eve of Pentecost, 
And Arthur kept the feast, with royal hospitality to greatest as to least. For Arthur was magnificent, a king of high renown, and unto Arthur's court there drew a hundred loyal knights and true to where the golden dragon flew above the golden crown. And Arthur reigned with Guinevere, a queen in her own right, the fairest lady ever seen, when as she moved in silken green or silver mantle satin sheen, it seemed to men that she had been mantled in heaven's light. So in the hall of Camelot, the tables were all, all were laid, and all of Arthur's that all of Arthur's folk might feast after the mass was said. But even as the chapel bell rang out the Angelus, and just before the company departed for the mass, there came a lady to the gate in haste on sweated steed, and cried, Pray God I'm not too late, oh help me in my need. Which one, she cried, is Lancelot, from him I crave a boon, for what must be accomplished can be done by him alone. Then Lancelot, in courtesy, replied, From whence are you? If I may keep my honour still, then tell me what to do. O oh, sir, I come from Pelle's land at bidding of the king, and what you do, only you, you'll only know when you achieve the thing. Then Arthur gave him leave to go, but Guinevere spoke clear. You must return tomorrow eve. You cannot fail us here. We cannot keep the holy feast without our bravest night, for you must grace our Pentecost when every flame burns bright. Fear not, the maid replied to her. He will return in time and he will keep his honour still as clear as church bells chime. She led him out from Camelot, through forests waste and wild. I lead you, sir, in faith, she said, to bless the chosen child. Fear not to come to Pelly's land. We come not to the keep where all the white doves moan to hear a lonely woman weep. But in a forest not far off, where holy maidens sing, the promised child they keep in trust is ready to take wing. She led him to a clearing and a chantry on the green, and Lancelot could hear the nuns, although they stayed unseen. He waited in a chamber there, still doubting of their truth, when two veiled sisters brought to him a fair and noble youth. A light was shining in his eyes. The lad was but fifteen the gentlest and most comely squire the knight had ever seen. We know there is no worthier knight, no fitter man than you, to give the promised child his spurs and teach him to be true. And is this also his own will? Comes it of his desire? Let him speak clearly for himself. Then answered the young squire. Yea, gladly, good Sir Lancelot, I left my mother's side. These holy ladies raised me here, that I might grow in godly fear, but not that I might bide. I heard a voice once, ringing clear, Take spurs, my child, and ride. Ride on for justice, Galahad, through this dark world and wide. Ride on for pity, Galahad, ride on to set things right, and take your spurs at Pentecost from Arthur's bravest night. As Lancelot gazed on that face from which such fair light shone, the son knew not his father, nor the father knew the son, but faint and clear, behind a screen retired where no man saw, the fair Elaine gazed on the scene with wonder, love and awe. It shall be so, said Lancelot. And on the morrow morn he knighted good Sir Galahad, all in the wits and dawn. Now will you ride with me this day to fair King Arthur's court, and keep our Pentecost with us, for it would glad my heart. I may not yet, said Galahad, but you will see me soon. I tarry in the chapel here for heaven's grace and boon. So Lancelot turned back to court all in the lengthening, strengthening day, and left the chantry on the green, where trembling and all unseen behind the chapel's woven screen, the new knight knelt to pray. For Lancelot loved Guinevere. Love would not let him bide. Love would not let him bide, but ride, ride till his love was at his side, and far and near the light burned clear. They lit that Whitsuntide. 
So then, and then the story will continue uh, with what happens that that evening of Whitsun Day when they have the feast uh, at uh, Camelot. And we'll see what happens then on another occasion. But thanks for dropping around.